Hello, and it's great to be with you again. It's been a long absence, been traveling for a while, and it's been kind of difficult to have these sit down videos. Uh, but I will put together a, a little bit of a show of some of the things I've experienced over the last few weeks, some really interesting ones. Anyway, back home with the, with the gang, and uh, today we shared a, just a, really an amazing bottle that I've been meaning to try with them for a while. So it's a Grand Reserva by Heredia, you know, in uh, Rioja. And it's a Tondonia, uh, Vigna Tondonia. You know, the, I mean, they have two bottlings, the Bosconia and the Tondonia. This is the sort of high grade. And the Grand Reserva is the highest grade, the highest quality wine that they make uh, only when the year is, in their opinion, exceptional. So you don't have this every year. This is in 1994. Uh, so there, there, there was a 1991. Um, I'm not sure if there was a 95. In the 2000s, I think there's 2001, uh, 2007, maybe 8, 11. There's been better years since then. But anyway, this is really the Grand Reserva, which is sort of the really top, if you want, Grand Cru uh, uh, from the region and from the Yoha. It's a very old winery. We discussed this when we had the Reserva together uh, earlier, maybe, I don't know, a year ago or more. And uh, it's sort of one of the grander names of uh, Spain or maybe uh, of the world in terms of uh, the history going back to the last uh, bit of the 19th century, their traditional methods. I mean, these, these guys really believe in just going all out on letting the wine express itself. So you've got old vines that have a very large property, 100 hectares, so like 250 acres. They grow a lot of Tempranillo, of course, but also Ganacha, uh, uh, some uh, Carignan, which has its own Spanish name, and uh, 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 Graciano as well. And, and they go into the blend. But this is really minimum 75% Tempranillo, the red, uh, the red wine. And, and they kind of like to explain everything they do about this. So the, the, they really, the aging takes place in, in 225 liter barrels for a long time, like a long time, eight, nine years. Uh, and they rack it along the way so that there's very little sediment left. Uh, and then uh, they find the wine and bottle it. Uh, no, after that, yes, right. And they keep the bottles in the cellar for a few years, five, six years. So that is really part of their uh, aging process. And they use, you know, these long corks, so that's comforting because these are not some of the short corks you see elsewhere, obviously branded and everything. They, they use wax on the Grand Reserva only because, again, these bottles are going to be in the cellar and potentially subject to all sorts of potential, you know, taint or, or uh, fungus or they could go through the cork. So th this is hermetically sealed with the wax and the wax is stamped at the top also as a more of a guarantee of origin uh, if you want and uh, these one become these wines become quite exclusive and quite expensive very quickly you're talking it's you know probably five times the price of the reserva in terms of when if you find it in the market and um, and uh, we're just gonna see if it's uh, if it's worth it although of course I've heard I've heard a lot uh, about it. Uh, the wine is, uh, again, sediment is gotten rid of at many steps in the process. And, and this is the end of the glass, of the bottle here. And I don't find much sediment, although I wouldn't say the color is absolutely clear. It is fine before it's bottled, as I think I said. And so you've got really, uh, from that point of view, there's no magic. It's really very traditional. Uh, so here we are. Um, the color, you know, it's obviously it's a very old wine, but you know, the color, I mean, if you have just a little bit in the glass, it looks kind of light, but even here with not too much, it's really not what I would call a super evolved color. It's still pretty vigorous and, and pretty sort of Bordeaux-like, you know, with what you get with a Tempranillo. Uh, again, it's not super clear, but uh, this is an old wine. There's all sorts of things going on there. Um, and the, the alcohol is not, high this is a 12 and a half percent alcohol 12 percent so back in those days 
and I don't know if things have changed. These are not wines that where you, you go and get really high alcohols, alcohol levels. On the nose, it's really what I expected, knowing how the wine is being made, basically. So you have a lot of uh, sort of, not a lot, sorry. I mean, I don't want to like overdo it here. You have some vanilla, you have some of that uh, prune, the pruneau, you know, in French, sort of, sort of that cook, dark fruit, those kinds of fruit. A little bit of raspberry, which is unusual, but I mean, maybe I'm just playing games on myself, but uh, playing tricks, but uh, I do get some of that fruit, but there's also primary, you know, mostly tertiary uh, flavors and, and notes like, like you know, uh, a little bit of vanilla again, uh, a little bit of that uh, sort of uh, earthiness you get. Um, also, some of this... I know people don't like that sort of old wood, old leather. I, I, you know, it's just that feeling you get. Maybe it's something else, but that's an expression that comes easily to mind. But it's it's rich, it's dark, it's it's nutty. Uh, it's it's a little bit of that. It's got a little bit of that dampness that really goes with age, and and to me makes it feel like a sort of like an old friend in a way. In the mouth, it's still got really nice acidity. By now, this has been open, let's say, maybe nine hours, and it's again, it's the bottom of the of the bottle, but it's just, it's. I would say it's still, you know, vigorous. It's uh, layered. You've got the again the acidity. You've got uh, all these tertiary notes that sort of come rushing at you. Uh, a little bit of tannins that still that are still present, very very fine, very really blended. They don't really they don't sort of provoke a reaction in your mouth, but you can feel a really nice long finish that's a little bit sweet. It sort of kept got a little bit of that sweetness. That sometimes you get with old uh, old wines. Uh, this was just amazing, really, with with the with the with the, with the buddies here, and and both in terms of the the surprise when you get an old wine that's really still doing so well, but also all the notes that it comes with that people want to you know look for and that uh, make an impression in terms of what you're feeling, in terms of the finish. In terms of what you know goes into making this so definitely worth the experience uh, it was something i wanted to have because together yesterday we had a really nice just an incredible bordeaux and tried to kind of keep up let's say with the same level it's very different although some of the traditions are the same uh, this one i'd say has a little bit more acidity a little bit more of that prune like fruit the lafitte uh, and we can talk about it separately had just a much more traditional, even almost younger, even though it's the same age, uh, sort of Bordeaux rectitude and, and you know, straight through cutting into the, the core of, of what wine is about. Anyway, uh, this was great. I'm happy to share this with you and uh, see you soon. Cheers.